Good night, whatever it is. There I am. Good afternoon. Miss Mona, you're here this morning. I'm glad you're here. This afternoon. I'm glad you're here. Uh, we are broadcasting, which is something we have not been doing, but we're doing that for the benefit of our members who are able to make it this afternoon. And uh, hopefully for the edification of those who just chose not to be here and uh, need to know uh, what we're looking at this next year. Our theme, as we discussed this morning, has been uh, our, our theme for this year is to be seeking the kingdom. And our uh, root verse is Matthew 6.33, which I preached from this morning. And, and uh, anyway, it's just good to be here. And if you're tuned in, I'm glad you're here. And uh, this afternoon, we just want to spend some time talking about this year, what we're planning, what our hopes are, and uh, some changes that we've already made in 2020 and how that's going to look going forward into 2021. And uh, we're just excited, and we're excited because we have reason to be excited because we have hope God is on the throne, Amen. And, uh, and we can rejoice and be thankful in that. And so uh, let's open with a word of prayer, and then, Brother Eric, I'm going to ask you just to come. And What's that? No, sir, we're going we're gonna to close with the Lord's Supper. We're going to close with the, you read the. You've got to read the order of service. That's all right, brother. That's all right. Let's pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I'm, uh, again, so blessed to be here, to be part of this church, Lord, church I had never stepped foot in over, uh, over a year ago. I didn't know anything about, very, knew very little about. But God, uh, you have made me a part of this church and, and um, made my family part of this church. And you have wed us together and blessed us with each other in wonderful relationships. And we just praise you, God, um, that these relationships aren't because we're so nice and kind and, and uh, friendly and reaching out towards one another. These relationships are based on our relationship with you. And, Lord, where all good things begin. And so, God, I just pray you just help us to continue to grow together. I pray be with our service uh, this afternoon as we talk about 2021 and our hopes and our dreams and our plans. And, uh, God, I just pray that our church will be encouraged, that we'll be energized, that we'll be uh, uh, looking for how we can make you first in our life and you first in our church. And God, I pray you be with our worship this, morning, uh, this afternoon and just bless us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come, brother. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Number 97 in your hymnal. change come now is the time to worship Just as you are to 
I'm going to read from uh, Matthew chapter 6, and read verses 5 through 13. Jesus says, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. But not ye, therefore, uh, be, ye not, be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we are so grateful for your love for us. And we're grateful that we have an opportunity to worship and to serve you. God, I pray that as we have this time where we uh, rec recognize our, our need our priority to give. Lord, help us to have a heart that is put you first in our pocketbook <laughs> and in everything in our life. Lord, help us to be faithful in seeking you first. Lord, help us to be faithful in having a, a, a prayer life that has meaning. And God, I pray you just be with this church, be with our continued services. Help us to be in a worshipful spirit and Lord, help us to be excited about what you're going to do with us. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. invite you to stand again and we're going to sing soldiers of christ arise and i know a number of you are looking at that and going i don't know this song you do it's crown him with many crowns with a different set of lyrics Four, seven, oh we're not up to screen okay 478 in your hymnals let me give you a moment to turn there i've gotten used to everything being behind me that wasn't kind of a complaint brother might have been an excuse. On the first. Soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armor on. Strong in the strength which God supplies through his evil. 
eternal Son, strong in the Lord of hosts, and in his mighty power, who in the strength of Jesus trust is more than conqueror. Stand then in his great might, with all his strength and Take to arm you for the fight, the panoply of God. From strength to strength go on, rest all and fight and pray. Tread all the powers of darkness down and win the Wesley can read, write him some songs. Amen. Great scriptural song there. For our last congregational, <clears throat> Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God, which is really very much the focus here, and uh, I think we'll be singing it a bit more this year. I'm sorry, that's number 42. I'm still spoiled. 42.
Well, again, good afternoon, Amber. Beautiful song. Amen. What a blessing. Well, today is Vision Sunday. Y'all used to call this Vision Night, but the sun is still up. So we can't quite exa- exactly call it Vision Night. In fact, my uh, notes say Vision Night, uh, but it is Vision Sunday, and uh, Vision Sunday is an important day. It's important to have a vision, isn't it? It's important to have direction in your own personal life. If you're not shooting for something, then you're going to miss every time. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, it's important for, for us individually to have a vision for our life, for goals, or, or, or something we're shooting for, and it's the same for a church. If a church does not have a direction it's pushing and pressing towards, then oftentimes it's a church without direction. Yes. And so uh, it's incredibly important that we embrace this. And this last year, 2020, uh, uh, I don't know that I'm ashamed to say it or if it's just the circumstances of 2020, but our theme was to make discipleship real in our everyday life. And that was very difficult challenge to accomplish. Uh, but this year, our, our vision is to uh, seek the kingdom, to seek the kingdom. And that involves not just uh, having a, an attitude of making disciples and a desire to <laughs> continually make disciples, but also a relationship, a personal relationship with the Lord that is meaningful and alive and vibrant. And as a church, uh, to be working uh, together in the furtherance of the gospel, that is what we are called to do. And uh, it's so easy for us to get stuck into uh, f- focusing on temporary things. I... I I know this, and I've preached about this so many times. I don't, and talked about this so many times, not just here, but at Temple Baptist and other places, at how temporary this life is. I mean, everything is temporary here. Our, our, uh, all of our belongings that we cherish are temporary. I, I'm holding an iPad up here this morning, I, uh, this afternoon. I brought it up here. I don't really know why I brought it up here. I'm not going to use it, but. This iPad is a wonderful tool. Guess what it is someday going to be? Garbage is what it's going to be. It's going to be recycled or it's going to be thrown in a landfill, and I'm never, ever going to use it again. Everything in this world is temporary, but what we do for the Lord is eternal. Amen. Right. And so uh, we must have a vision not only in our personal life, but as a church that we're going about uh, uh, doing the Lord's business on His terms, working towards an eternal uh, result. Uh, we got to keep things first, first things first. Amen. I was talking to Brother Alan Miller after church this morning, and we were talking about that. And I was reminded of the saying that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we're going to try to do this year. And I'm going to try to keep that before you. Uh, you know, this Matthew six thirty three. Uh, vision for our life and for our church is not just a, a few choices here and there. It is a total lifestyle. It is putting God first in everything, keeping first things first. I am next week going to begin a sermon series walking through the book of Mark. And the reason for that is because we must uh, we need to grow in our understanding of Jesus, of his life, of his ministry, of and his servant's heart. And Mark, he is, the, uh, he is the suffering servant. And what a wonderful example he is to us. Mark is also a fast-moving uh, gospel, so it will keep it fresh for us. And I'm excited, very excited to preach that for you. But that's my goal, is this year is to keep before us this idea that we serve, we truly are to be serving God in our daily life, not just trying to find sermons that fit uh, our own problems at home. I I listen to a lot of sermons when I'm trying to prepare for things, and I hear a lot of sermons are are often focused on your daily grind and all the temporary stuff. But friends, this is we have an eternal life, and we got to be about eternal things. And so uh, that, is, that is our vision. That is what our f- focus is going to be. We will have more sermons. I'm not going to preach Sunday to Sunday to Sunday to Sunday to Sunday on Mark. I will probably scatter in some seeking sermons in there somewhere too. Uh, but hopefully that will be a blessing to you. Ministries. Uh, 
usually we talk about the calendar. The last vision night I was part of, uh, we talked about uh, the calendar, and we will be talking about the calendar, but you know, we've made some changes to some ministries this year. And um, this, you know, right, it's behind me, there it is. Uh, our Sunday school ministry has made a pretty major transition, transitioning from uh, what y'all were doing before to this Answers in Genesis curriculum. I know some uh, the children's classes were using Answers in Genesis, but now we're trying to use that. In fact, we're using that in all of our classes, our uh, adult class, our high school class, our children's classes. And the benefits we've discussed is that all classes are to be teaching the same lessons at the same time. So this Sunday morning, hopefully... All the classes were on um, uh, the lesson we had from the story of Noah's Ark and the true story of Noah's Ark and, and the cataclysm that that was. And that is going to continue. We are going to spend a tremendous more amount of time of in, in the book of Genesis. I can tell you that through this year. We're going to spend plenty more time in Genesis. And um, we've had some change to our classes. A lot of that has been dictated to us by covid and uh, our adult classes, which was previously uh, the Good Samaritans and the Ambassadors class, there you go, uh, were separate classes. We had an upstairs class, and we had the Good Samaritans class here. And uh, we've met together because in this space, it's allowed us to have more space uh, to spread out. Let me ask, have you all enjoyed that together? Yeah. And so I think... And I, I wanted to talk, I've wanted to talk about this a few Sundays, but it seems like every morning I'm prepared to talk about it. Like this morning, there's about six of us here. And so uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to get with the leadership of the ambassadors class and leadership of the Sem- Sem- Good Samaritans class and talk about coming together and forming a new adult Sunday school class and, uh, and, and just a new class, not ambassadors, not Good Samaritans, and we'll talk about how we're going to combine that and start having events together again. And uh, that, I think, will be a real blessing and help us to, uh, to grow and knit ourselves together a little more closely. Um, another ministry that we have added this year is Master Clubs. Master Clubs is a ministry that Melissa and I have been a part of for uh, I guess, think, I think about 10 years we've been doing, at least 10 years we've been doing Master Clubs itself. Before that, we probably did another 10 years of children's ministry. Is that right? At least five or six. We've been doing it for quite a while. And uh, this a Wednesday night kids club is a tremendous asset to a church, I think. It allows us to connect with families, to get kids in who, uh, who may not go to church on a regular basis, that their parents may not bring them to church. It hopefully will give us a door into uh, kids' lives who live in this community. Uh, we're, we're planted right here on the corner of, near the corner of Ella and 34th, but just down the street are houses right behind us are houses. We're planted real close to a neighborhood. We're almost a neighborhood church. And there, no doubt, are kids around in our neighborhood who, if we can get a foot in the door, maybe through VBS or some other ministry, or good signage about master clubs, uh, we can get into their life in this program, teaches them about the gospel, teaches them what it means to be a servant, teaches what it means to be a church member. I mean, it's a tr- tremendous ministry and opportunity for us to, um, uh, to minister to our community and to kids. Um, and it's a growing ministry, and it's going to have to continue to grow, and it will experience growing pains, as uh, our church is hopefully going to experience some growing pains. That means it's going to be a pain <laughs> sometimes, okay? Um, we're going to need workers, and we're going to need faithful workers. And so be in prayer about how God might want to use you in that. Um, a new ministry that we're, another new ministry that we're starting in twenty. 21 is a ministry that Brother Lester is going to come and talk to us about. There he is. Surprise. Do it. Brother Lester has given so much of his life to preaching and pastoring, but he's also spent quite a bit of time writing and studying and uh, 
and sharing what God has taught him through many decades of ministry. And uh, he's going to continue that ministry as part of our church. I sure am. I am a church man. I believe what I preach. And I believe that the work of God should be done through his church and that everybody ought to be a member of the church. I am not in favor of freelance ministries that are not connected to a church, parachurch type organization. Some of them do some good, but the right way to do it is through a church. And so I will be doing a work that is going to reach hopefully even beyond just the membership of this church, but it's anchored right here. And he's my pastor and he'll be my uh, supervisor and boss in a lot of ways. So I'm glad to be doing this. And I will tell you that as of of uh, the 31st and now to the first of this year, I'm in a new role. For me, it's a very different role. I've been pastor pastor churches for a lot of years, but now I'm not a senior pastor anymore. And I want to plead with you who are here and you who may be home or listening to please accept Brother Darren as your pastor. He's the man that's in charge here and responsible here and no longer me. And if I'm a little, maybe a uh, seem a little offensive to you or, you know, where I don't want to be, but where I refer you to him and a little evasive, just know that I need to do that. I mean, I need for him to be recognized as as our spiritual leader here in this church and the man who God has put in charge of what's going on here. And starting with the first, uh, this changed my direction quite a bit. I mean, not the overall direction, but exactly how I was doing it and and that I have two main areas of concern that are going to be impacted by this new direction for me. One of those, I intend to take better care of Margaret Hudson. Amen. <laughs> She's uh, in the ministry. As Melissa's going to learn, I think, more and more, the ministry will take your husband away to a great degree. I mean, it just demands, and he becomes everybody's man. In a lot of ways, he's going to be asked to answer questions and give counsel and be places uh, that are really impossible for him to be. He just can't be everywhere at once and available to everybody all the time. And it's done that for me for a long time. And I feel like in many ways I have neglected this lady and have not given her what I should have, the proper attention and help in our lives. So I hope to be, this is a big deal for me, I hope to be a better husband for Margaret and to be in her life more and not everything always on a deadline. So looking forward to that. And I'm also uh, in the second part of my life expecting, I mean that the personal life, expecting to get in a little better shape. I know you're probably thinking you waited to wait too late to do it, but I am I've been <laughs> a minister being consuming as it is, you know, a proper, reg a proper exercise regimen and that sort of thing has taken a back seat. And so I have, I'm planning to, I've already started doing some walking when my feet and legs will allow that a little and some stretching. And I know that's needed and I, I want to be around a little longer and I know this, if your body goes, you don't have anything to say. I mean, it shuts you down. So as, as little of value in compared with spiritual things as our physical, still you have to take care of physical things. And I want to do that. And so try to be a little healthier. And, and, but my main direction in my change and what I'll be doing here for our church as part of the ministry of this church it has to do with our spiritual world and what I'm doing to serve the Lord. And I can assure you that by no longer being a senior pastor here or anywhere, uh, I don't intend to quit serving the Lord. I have retired from the Lord. I never intend to retire to the Lord. He'll take me when he's ready. So until that day, I'd like to be busy and sprinting and doing the best I can and always routine excellence. So I have in these days ahead two main areas related to ministry. Uh, one of those areas, as you well know, I think you are here, I want to do more writing. I want to put things down that I believe, that we believe, that I haven't seen enunciated, address some issues, some probably the thorny hard issues. Um, 
that may not go so well with some preachers and <laughs> some others because I'm going to get in the preacher's gearbox. I think in one of the books I wrote, and I'm, t- I'm pretty sure I'm going to title that particular book, Blame It on God. It seems like that about every time somebody flubs up, don't do their job, they just say, well, it wasn't the will of God. Well, I don't believe that stuff. I believe God expects us to do our job. We can't blame all of our failures and things that don't go right, just blame it on God. I, don't, I think that's a great injustice to God. So I want to write books that deal with real issues that I do not, as I said, see addressed very much in the work of God, in, at least in my life. So I'll be writing some things. It won't all, all that I write will not be new titles. Somebody asked me, I think it was Richard De Los Santos earlier, about uh, where I am in the next book. Well, I am five chapters through the next book out of about 30. <laughs> That's where I am. So I've already started writing, and I'm titling this book, What's So Wrong with Doing Right? What's so wrong with being honest? What's so wrong with the self-policing? What's so wrong with respecting other people. And there's a whole uh, list of those. It's a common sense book. It will not be a theological book per se. It's not going to be written to church people as such. I'm hoping to it to be an apologetics to the community who is so negative to Christianity to think another look. Christianity is what we need more of and less of because it's good common sense stuff that makes a difference in a society and an individual's life. So I'll be writing some new titles, but I'll also be writing uh, some, some editing, uh, quite a bit of editing going on. If you've looked just a month ago, uh, I released another book on Amazon called What We Believe in Why, Volume 2, and spent a lot of time, about a year, with a lot of help uh, from people who proofread and brought things to my attention to, to strengthen the language, make it more direct, make it more, make it stronger, and I, I need to go back through probably 15 other books that I have, and do the same thing to them. And of course that all takes time to do. And so I will be spending some time on written material, but I am aware that our society doesn't read like it should, especially hard material, hard co- uh, copy material. Uh, there's just more people watch TV and YouTube and things of that sort. So I'm taking a hint, I think, and so on my forward ministry and not only written, but I think uh, it will be some uh, uh, verbal and, and visual ministry. Uh, I see avenues like YouTube as having lots of potential. I would, for example, like to take the basic Bible truths, these six one-hour Bible lessons that we teach 101 to try to help people come to know the Lord. And By the way, Chris has been doing a sort of self-study and we're touching base. I would like to get in front of our camera, and we have one here, a really good camera, and sit down and actually teach, like I'm teaching to a person sitting across from me, to a person in that audience, teach that basic Bible truth series. Put it out there on YouTube. Who knows? I'd like to do something similar with the What We Believe in Why series, volume one and two. There are 103, uh, 105 lessons between those two. I could one at a time go through those lessons and present them so that they're just standing there. Forty years after I'm in heaven, if the Lord doesn't take away everything, I mean, <laughs> they could be up there preaching to people and teaching. So I see a great ministry uh, that people, as one man who came here to our church, um, his name is Scott uh, uh, Farrell. Farrell. Scott said, you'd Preacher said, "You don't. I don't think you realize how many people like me there are, who in the two o'clock or three o'clock, maybe in the morning, are sitting there watching those things." And he said, "You need to appeal." And I believe that. I think so. So uh, I'm, I'm expecting to do a lot more writing. I'm expecting to do a lot more speaking. Primarily, when I say speaking, I'm talking about that kind of speaking. However, uh, there may be occasions when, like, I will be in another church doing a seminar for his dad, Brother Mike Bragdon. I'll be up there in about a month doing a seminar on a Saturday for young preachers and then just staying over preaching on Sunday. That may be happening some, but it will not be, I don't think, a whole lot. But I want to be here. I want to be a faithful member and put my tithes and offerings in here, and I want to support what this man 
uh, preaches, and I want to be able to help him. I want to help, brother. I'm not going to stand by and let him fall in off a cliff if I can help it. I care too much about him for that to happen. So that's a little bit about what's under consideration. We talk about a new ministry of writing and speaking. Uh, that's what I see. However, I serve a master who don't always let me know in advance some changes he has in mind. So I'm going to be flexible to him. But if he lets me do what is in my heart, that's what it'll be. Well, um, as far as uh, focal point and, and God's heart, wouldn't you say discipleship is in the forefront of his, of his heart? And I think that's uh, a vision of ours. Um, and we started this discipleship ministry um, this past year before COVID hit. We started this, and we saw a need for discipleship once we saw a lot of our, our youth uh, promoted into adulthood, so to speak, and we saw that there was a need. Uh, I think a lot of church ministries struggle uh, with their youth, and, and statistics bear this out. And what happens is there is this gray area in between youth and uh, the main church ministry and, and the church uh, and so on, and there is no bridge to that. Um, the youth kind of get lost once they're out of the youth department. A lot of times they go out and said, well, there's no place for me in church. Well, the discipleship ministry is to put into the hearts of our young adults and those who are growing into maturity, not just our youth, but those who need maturity, to understand that our whole life's purpose is to follow Christ and to be committed. It's a lifestyle <laughs> Uh, to be able to commit to God is, and, and our whole ministry on earth and our whole purpose in life is to completely devote our lives to God. Yeah. It's not a social community. It's right. not a social event. We're not here to just come week in and week out. This is a daily servitude. And I'm so thankful. You know, we, had, we pretty much have all our youth that uh, graduated over the last couple of years that are attending this discipleship class. Um, it's a... Uh, it's just been a blessing to me to be part of it, to be honest with you. And uh, so I'm um, just so thankful that uh, we're, we're doing this ministry under the leadership of Brother Darren. And we talked about this, and which brings up the next topic here. Um, by the way, um, just to finish up on the talk on our Discipleship Thursdays is, of course, our focal point in, in discipleship. is re We have been using the curriculum Radical, um, but it encompasses everything and anything and everything that uh, the Lord tells us and commands us of us and expects of us to, to obey Him and trust Him in every way. Um, and our, we're going to be transitioning into a new curriculum called Follow Me. Um, part of our goal as well, you, you, Brother Hudson spoke of basic Bible truths, is our, our next goal in mind is to also teach our young adults how to teach basic Bible truths. I mean, how many uh, people in general, uh, how many Christians in general can say, I can teach and lead somebody through a Bible study to win them to Christ. How many people can say that? How many young adults, uh, young Christians can say that? And we need more uh, young Christians, Christians in general, to, to not just lean on the pastor, uh, myself, or others to win people to Christ. You, we're all called to go, in, go in, into all the world and, and, uh, and reach the lost. That's our, that's our calling, all of us. So, in saying that, um, we, I just spoke about our youth transitioning, of course, but with our transition to uh, a lot of our youth over the last couple of years into young adulthood, uh, we do have a, a smaller congregation in our youth, but that doesn't mean we still have a, a ministry need here. We still have a youth here, and we still have uh, a, a need here that needs to be met, where we still want to reach out in our community through master clubs and VBS and other outreach ministries to reach young people because we need young people for the next generation to reach others because there has to be a future, right? <laughs> in order to have a future at Northwest, we need young people uh, stepping in and stepping up and to be able to lead others to Christ. So the Shine Youth Ministries are, are a focal point, and th these classes are, uh, it's, a, it's truly the foundation of it is evangelistic. We want to be able to uh, have a curriculum and, and uh, 
principles set in place with the gospel where we can reach people that come into these classes. Um, we used to have our youth went, our youth uh, youth nights on Sunday nights, but we transitioned that on a Wednesday night because we believe, uh, in talking to Brother Darren, uh, we believe it's more conducive to reaching people on a, on a weeknight, and it also opens up more opportunities for the rest of our, our youth to be able to be, participate in our ministries throughout the week and on Sunday. So our Shine Ministries, um, another focal point of this is also apologetics. Um, uh, we, when we first started this, uh, Shine Ministries on Wednesday nights began at the same time Master Clubs as this past year. And we started with a, uh, almost a, a, almost a college-level apologetic class. And I, I tell you what, <laughs> uh, even myself, and, and I've been studying apologetics for years, and and knowing the need of apologetics, that we need to stand up for our faith, defend our faith uh, through studying the scriptures. I, in starting these apologetics classes, I've learned so much <laughs> through these classes. Um, so uh, this is a tr- this will be a tremendous blessing for uh, and reaching out to our youth and uh, saved our loss to be able to understand the invaluable truths that God has given to us here. So, but that's uh, that's what I have for uh, these ministries here. We've also spoke, uh, spoken a little bit about uh, in our uh, last business meeting when we were talking about our, our budget and voted on our budget about the possibility of some facility improvements. Uh, God has blessed Northwest Baptist Church with a solid facility. And uh, it is not the, not the most, uh, probably not the design we would pick or the layout we would, have, we would pick now if we were building a new building. Uh, but this is what they laid down in the 1960s, and it is rock solid, uh, to say the least. I, I describe it when people ask me what your church is like. I said, it's like a bomb shelter. Uh, it is solid. I mean, these walls are solid. It's not going anywhere, and that is awesome. Uh, and really, it's a, it, what a, a even major, a larger blessing is how well this church has stewarded these facilities. It's very clear, you know, when I when I first came on the scene and we were talking about church and and the history of this church and uh, what has taken place over the last uh, eight to ten years. I know y'all have made a lot of improvements to these facilities and and done a lot of work to them and it shows. They're very nice and they're well kept Um, but there is some needs still and especially going into uh, uh, trying to kind of bring our church in the 21st century, trying to attract young families, trying to attract family with chil- families with children, I think one of the most important things we've been discussing and hopefully we'll uh, uh, discuss and vote on is uh, institution of some security, a security camera system. And, uh, you know, that, uh, it, will, it will open the door, I believe, uh, to show people that we're serious about their children we're, super, we're serious about safety, and that's very important to people. You know, Melissa and I have three little boys, and we have our niece, Sedona, and uh, there is nothing more precious to us than our children. And it is, we live in a scary world. <laughs> we really do. We live in a frightening place uh, that is not as uh, safe as it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Um, even 10 years ago, things continue to change and predators continue to uh, seek opportunities and we want to uh, discourage that and protect our church from that as much as possible and more than protect our church, we want to protect the children who come under the doors of this church. And so um, we're going to talk about that and I've already mentioned about uh, changing out these windows and in here and probably doing some updating in here, Uh, but uh, I, I just wanted to keep this before us because it's part of our vision that we want to make this place uh, uh, first to to be a nice place where it's attractive for people to come and feel comfortable. And um, we want to continue to take good care of what God has given us to steward over. Looking at our, at our calendar, the first thing this year, and it is just, I mean, just around the corner, is our 2021 missions conference. And in keeping with our church vision, uh, uh, seeking the kingdom, our theme for this year for the church, uh, uh, the 2021 missions conference is going to be teamwork 
in the work of the kingdom. You know, there's a tremendous amount of misunderstanding regarding the relationship between churches and missionaries. And uh, oftentimes, and I, I don't think that exists as much here in this church, and that's because y'all have purposely made an effort to understand what missions looks like uh, and the relationship between a church and the missionary. But, uh, you know, our relationship with these missionaries is not just to send them a check and, and hope they're doing okay. Uh, we're to be involved in their missions, pr- involved in praying for them, involved in keeping on uh, up with what they're doing, and uh, being attentive to what their needs are so that we might minister to them, help them accomplish what God has called them to do and put them on the field to do. And so uh, our main speaker this year, our, our, our keynote speaker is going to be none other than Tom Bragdon. Uh, and Tom Bragdon is really a, a wonderful friend of mine. I've known him since I was a teenager, and he's been a wonderful ministry to my life. But Tom Bragdon also was a missionary to Japan for 10 years. Uh, along with uh, his brother, Mike Bragdon, where Nathan spent some time in Japan a little while back. And so uh, Tom Bragdon is going to be our keynote speaker. And uh, Jared Tunnel and Deirdre Tunnel, who are missionaries to Argentina, are going to be with us. And also Randy and Donna uh, Weinsberg is going to be here, who are missionaries to the Dominican Republic. And a really exciting part about having them here with us is that they're going to leave our missions conference, and within a week or so, they're going to be on the field. And so that's going to be very exciting to see uh, how God has carried them through the, the deputation process and has prepared them and see exactly what they're about to be doing. It's going to be very exciting. That Sunday of our missions conference, January the 24th, we will be uh, making our faith uh, annual faith promise promise pledges and uh, you know that is such an important part of missions is that we give to missions I don't I I love that this church is so dedicated to giving and to giving specifically towards missions because many churches I mean many churches uh, their missions is supported partially out of their giving and then partially out of their general fund and because the giving towards missions is not as emphasized. And really, I think that Northwest does it right. And so uh, we're going to be, of course, making those pledges, ready to do that on January 24th. Also, during this year, we'll have, a, uh, we'll have a Charitable Helps offerings, uh, which uh, thankfully uh, uh, Raymond and Aline Coates manage that ministry, and they do a wonderful job in doing that. And so we'll be taking up offerings to help the poor, to help those who are in need. You know, uh, life throws you some curveballs sometimes, and praise the Lord that our church is able to step in and minister to those people in their time of need. Uh, some, of the most, uh, some of the most powerful relationships and wonderful redemption stories are where when churches step into somebody's life and minister to them, not just giving them handouts, but ministering to them in a real way and, and showing them the love of Christ and uh, ministering to them and they will (laughs) many times that'll turn around how they view their relationship with the Lord they may be unsaved people sometimes or they may be members of this church who are struggling and when when presented with that they are so much more grateful for their relationship and the dependence they can have on God and so I think it's a wonderful ministry on April 4th we will have Easter Sunday let me tell you let's be in prayer about COVID this year I had to write an email (laughs) about COVID. It was one of the last things I want to write about, but it's so important that we're careful right now. It's so important, but Lester spoke at at great length about that this morning, how uh, there's a high risk of exposing uh, one another, even unknowingly, just given that we've been, uh, we've just gone through the holidays, and they're talking about the major spike that we're seeing now is, related to thanksgiving and so what we're what what is to follow is not (laughs) it's going to be maybe a month down the road before we really know what the the uh, uh, after effects of christmas and and new year's are going to be so be in prayer that this covid stuff will finally go away Uh, i am sick of it and uh, but really we have opportunities uh, to start doing more fellowship one another, 
with one another, and Easter is a wonderful opportunity for that. And so uh, Easter Sunday, of course, is an amazing, wonderful Sunday where we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the victory we have in Him through the resurrection. Uh, but we want to have an opportunity, we want that to be an opportunity to bring people in from outside and maybe share some time of fellowship with them. On May, the very beginning of May, we will have a um, uh, Answers That Build Faith seminar. And we're going to have this last year, our plan was to have uh, this, <laughs> Still a Baptist, with uh, Jerry Locke. And Jerry Locke is a wonderful preacher and, and friend of this church, as I understand it. And um, uh, wonderful speaker, presenter. I mean, that guy is a very talented man. And uh, I, have, I have this book, and I've been itching to see this presentation of his. Um, because, you know, there is a lot of questions among uh, other Baptists of whether or not Baptist is a good name to carry any longer. Uh, but there's a reason why we're Baptists and, uh, and a reason why we should remain Baptists. Amen. And why we can stand behind God's word and, and believe that we can forge ahead as we are and, uh, and do the Lord's work. And so uh, that'll be on May 1st and 2nd. And I think we're running a little long, so I'm gonna, we'll try to pick up the pace here in a little bit. Brother Nathan has got a couple more for us. All right, just like we do every year, we have a graduation Sunday. Uh, Last year, we had Julianne graduate, just our, our single graduate, and this year, we'll have uh, Sedona and Amber graduating, and it's just a time for us to recognize um, just their promotion into adulthood, but also that uh, high school and graduating, it's not a, uh, it's a big deal, so, and uh, it's more so than moving into adulthood and how uh, big of a role that plays in their lives and how we need to support them in that and how we need to embrace them and, and love them and so good time. We have normally have refreshments, and uh, and we have a gift uh, for our graduates as as well. So um, just a good time for us to dedicate time. So just make sure you put, uh, put that on your bookmarks or bookmark that. Speaking of, uh, if you guys didn't get the gift, so we're handing out these gifts to each member. These notebooks, um, as well as you would find a bookmark inside the notebook with all the events that we're speaking of. Um, the one thing to disregard that's on there due to my fault, is February 28th is a uh, friend day, but cross that out. That's not going to be there. Um, but everything else is fine on there. Just wanted to make sure and notate that in case. I know you guys are uh, really good at keeping an eye on that kind of stuff, and I know it would have came, <laughs> yeah, came to me irregardless. So now you know. <laughs> Feature did the punch. All right, um, youth camp. Youth camp, um, uh, one of the many unfortunate things about COVID, as we spoke of, is the fact that we didn't get to have youth camp. It's something we always look forward to every year, a great time of getting away and a, a great time of refreshing and rededicating our lives to Christ. And uh, this past year was going to be our first year at Timberline, uh, but because of COVID, we couldn't do that. But this year, our hope and prayer is that that will happen. I guess that's the expect, and that's to be expected, um, and that we're going to move forward in that direction. direction going uh, to, uh, uh, to the youth camp. So uh, another thing that uh, brings a smile to my face and, uh, and really that I enjoy doing every year since we started doing this uh, about three years ago is a Vacation Bible School. Um, I, I don't think anything's more important in ministry than reaching souls and reaching kids. Um, it's just a tremendous ministry, and it's been a blessing uh, uh, of me to uh, a mind to be part of God's work in this and to be able to have so many of our church uh, members uh, step in and, and really dedicate their time and to be able to serve kids. Just as in Master Clubs, as critical that ministry is uh, to our church, I believe VBS as well, it's critical. So um, I think our plan is to do the Incredible Race. That's one of, I think, two options that we have, but that's, uh, again, with camp. This is, we're expected to move forward with this, uh, covid uh, that put an asterisk on there because of COVID, but that's our that's our plan, uh, as well as a youth conference. Now, this is one of the rare events uh, towards the end of last year that we were able to attend uh, shortly after uh, some of the COVID issues as far as uh, the stay-at-home orders and a lot of the uh, more strict uh, quarantining. Uh, Rogers did a tremendous job, Rogers Baptist Church, in which uh, 
uh, where their youth conference is located annually, uh, did a tremendous job of, uh, of providing a health conscious environment to keep it friendly, but yet still have uh, a time where we could gather and to fellowship, uh, something that was entirely lacking because of COVID, where there's so much space away from people, you're not able to fellowship with other Christians, and this uh, provided that. And I can tell uh, with our youth and, and people who were able to go, it was a tremendous blessing for us. So our plan is to do that July 19th to the 21st of 2021 as well. So, All right. Brother Dan. And then coming September 27th, we'll have 57 years of ministry at Northwest Baptist Church. And again, hopefully, <laughs> we will be well past COVID and we will be able to fellowship with far more comfort and freedom uh, and uh, hopefully invite uh, uh, people more freely uh, so that they can see our church, see how we're, uh, what, we're, what we're trying to do here. And um, that'll be a wonderful opportunity. Then in October, this last year, it was a blessing to try to do some kind of fall festival. But I understand y'all did much larger productions before, and that's fun. Fall, fall festival is fun. And, uh, and, and so we want to do that this next year. We want to plan that uh, to be a big event for our church and uh, hopefully for our community to invite people and be friendly with them, be hospitable, and get to... Uh, let them have some fun on our facilities and and uh, and at our expense, and hopefully build some relationships with them. Uh, then in November, November fifth and sixth, I look at my wife like she's gonna like I'm gonna make her talk, but I'm not. Um, we're gonna have the ladies retreat, and that was another uh, ministry that got canceled this year. And how many of y'all missed that? Ooh, yeah. And so I know my wife really missed it. John missed it too. He missed mom being gone. Um, and so uh, hopefully we're going to do that again. It's all dependent on how this year pans out. Uh, that'll be November 5th and 6th. And then at the end of the year, December 12th, uh, we will be having our Christmas service. And really, I, I think we have a bright future ahead of us. Uh, Brother Nathan did talk about friend day and how that's probably going to be moved from February 28th either to another date or just removed from the schedule. Really, I think in our present climate, I don't think COVID's going to allow us to do it in February. Um, but, you know, God willing, Lord willing, we can do it in the spring, in the fall. Um, so we'll talk about that and pray about that. Um, are y'all awake still? I'm going to grab my Bible. You know, this afternoon is very much about our vision and about presenting our vision and our calendar and our ministries and really what we're hoping and how we're hoping our church will grow and continue and, uh, and, and how that's tremendously important. Uh, and so I do have a short message, and I will keep it short uh, to, to uh, allow you to withstand you know that what what is the saying you know the 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 heart can only absorb what the the seat can absorb something like that so uh, if you need to stand up that's okay you can stand during services we won't think you're Pentecostal or anything like that uh, but I, I do want to talk about something I think that is incredibly important to our church going forward in uh, something that has been it's existed I think in all churches and then has been in this church um, but I, I think it's going to play a, a very instrumental part in our future, and that is something basic, very basic, like prayer. You know, prayer is like breathing. Uh, breathing is the most basic thing you must do to survive. If you, you know, you can live without water for a while, you can live without food for a surprisingly long while, you can live without shelter. There's people who do this all over this all over the city of Houston, 
for days and weeks and months and years on end. You can live without a lot of things, but if you don't breathe, you are not going to live for very long. And our relationship with the Lord, one of the most basic, maybe the most basic things that is so horribly neglected is prayer. We, for us to survive as a church, for us to survive in our relationship with the Lord, we must have an active and vibrant prayer life. Uh, Prayer is so important. It's one of the most powerful ways we can express our dependence on Him. It's one of the most uh, powerful ways we can have access to uh, the power of God to help us through our life. Uh, You know, we're talking about keeping first things first. When you're trying to fit one of these first things, one of these big first things into your life, one of those big first things needs to be prayer. We've got to give more time towards prayer. We spent on Wednesday nights a significant time discussing the subject of corporate prayer and how it fits into our corporate worship. And, and, uh, you know, it shouldn't be a time of much repetitiveness. It shouldn't be a time of just filling in a space between the offering and the offertory or between the uh, scripture reading and the offertory. It shouldn't be a filler time uh, between uh, when, you know, the singing, the congregational singing is over and the special is going to come up. No, our prayer is to be very personal and real and, uh, and, and honest with the Lord, not just a, a show. And so I read this afternoon from Matthew. <clears throat> Matthew, we see in verses 9 through uh, 13, the Lord's prayer, or the disciples' prayer. And just like I said, I'm going to keep this short, so I will make it short for your benefit. Um, but the Lord Jesus tells uh, this, this crowd, he says, Pray after this manner. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now what does that really mean? It means that our priority should be to understand who God is. God's position, that he is God in every sense of that name. That he is God, that he is holy, he is sovereign, he is righteous, and he is above all. And his position is holiness. And our, one of our goals in our lives should be that his name is made holy and, and presented well to this world. And uh, so that's why we pray, hallowed be thy name. And then the next verse, verse 10, thy kingdom come. What does that say? Just like we were talking this morning, seeking the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. You know, when Jesus came, the kingdom isn't coming. The kingdom is here. And Jesus brought the kingdom. And and that is something that is growing on earth all the time. As we do the work of the kingdom, as we uh, fulfill the the great commission, the kingdom continues to grow. And so our prayer should be is that, uh, that the kingdom continues to grow here on earth. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We want this world, with all its dysfunction, with all its political mess, to look more and more like God's ruling in heaven. And it may be that that only takes place within these walls, and as we grow this membership of this church, and we add to this church, and God adds to this church, that the kingdom will grow right here in this church. And that's part of our mission. Um, Verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. The Lord knows what we have need of. We need to show our dependence on Him. We rely on ourselves so much, don't we? Uh, I mean, we're, we're constantly relying on ourselves. And so we need, to, we need to understand that everything we have comes from Him. Verse 12, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We're supposed to have an attitude of repentance towards the Lord, seeking His forgiveness. But as we seek His forgiveness, we're supposed to have a pure heart about it. Uh, we can't seek forgiveness from the Lord while we're hurt, ho- ho- harboring a grudge against someone else in anger and in resentment. No, that, that's not going to work. Lead us not in temptation. Again, keep our hearts pure. Not, allow us not to, uh, to fall in temptation, but deliver us from evil or from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It all belongs to Kim. And listen, our, our ministry and our personal present lives... 
is dependent on our relationship and our prayer and a life with Him. If we don't have a vibrant, healthy prayer life, you know, I've seen it in my own life. How many of y'all have had, tried to have a good relationship with God without prayer? <laughs> I've tried. I've tried really hard. It does not work. Uh, you, that is a plan destined to fail every single time. And so uh, let us make prayer not just uh, a part of our life, but a part of our families, a part of our church. And let, that, let us be a people who pray. Praise God, y'all are a people who pray. You know, y- y'all have a, a prayer list, uh, a prayer uh, chain on, on the uh, Google, Google groups. And those messages pop up and y'all are praying for one another. And that is a tremendous blessing. We have time for prayer. We keep a prayer list together. But you know, we need to not just pray for one another and pray for these illnesses. We need to be praying for this lost and dying world. We need to be praying uh, for the world outside these walls. We need to be praying for the world outside the borders of our own nation. We need to be praying for these missionaries we have represented around here. Our, our ministry needs to be marked with fervent, uh, powerful, earnest prayer. Amen. So uh, we're right now, if it's okay with you, we're going to have a little time of corporate prayer. And I'm going to ask uh, as, a, as a benefit to your seat and as a benefit uh, to our hearts, hopefully, stand with me. If you're able, let's stand together. We might would, in other circumstances, join hands. But I don't think we're quite there yet. Certainly not today. But let's stand together. And then uh, we're going to have, I'm going to lead us in some corporate prayer. And then to close our service, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you are such an attentive and loving God. Father, we understand that without you we are nothing. And that because of your Son, and only because of your Son, and your faithfulness to follow through on the prophecies we see all through the Old Testament, and the promises that we see of a Savior, Only through your faithfulness do we have anything to claim in you. Only through your Son do we have anything to claim. God, we're so grateful that you have given us such a wonderful inheritance that all of us in here who have trusted you as our Savior have an eternal inheritance with Christ that someday we'll be raised with Him and that we will live forever with you. God, we praise you. God, I praise you for this church and how this church has stood for over 56 years, holding forth the light of truth, doing its part, best that it can, to share the gospel with the world. God, I pray that as we move forward into 2021, Lord, I pray that your kingdom will come in Northwest Baptist Church. Lord, we pray that your name will be hallowed, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to understand at a deeper level our true dependence on you for every moment. Lord, I pray that our lives will be marked with dependence on you, that we will divorce ourselves from the idea that we can stand on our own two feet, that we can pay our bills on our own, that we can uh, sustain Uh, all the burdens of life in our own strength. Lord, help us to recognize completely and totally our utter dependence on you, whether we like it or not. God, help us to embrace that in a way that, again, marks our life. Lord, I pray that you will help us, help me, to make first things first, to put your ministry, your gospel, a prayer life, time in your word as things that are first in my life. Lord, help us to do that as a church. Lord, I pray for the preaching that we're going to experience, that we're going to go through together over the next year, that it will be led by you, that it will be empowered by you, and Lord, that it will affect change not only in our hearts, but in our daily lives. Lord, I pray 
uh, for the world outside these walls. This is a small place, and there is so much more outside these walls. There are so many who are hurting, who need you, who have no help without you, who have no hope without you. So God, I ask, help us to be instruments, tools to share the truth of the gospel with the world. Lord, right outside our walls in this community, Lord, in the state of Texas, in the, in the United States, and all over the world. Lord, we have uh, missionaries who are all over the world that we're supporting. Lord, help us to actively minister with them. Help us to team ourselves with them so that they can do your work more effectively. Lord, I pray that you will just lead us in all that we do. Lord, help us to have uh, and make an effort to seek your righteousness in our own life, to get our hearts and our lives pure before you, that we might serve you in a way that is pleasing and not hypocritical, that we will show humility instead of pride, and that we will be completely submitted and obedient to your will. God, I just thank you again to be part of this church. Lord, help us. Without you, there is no hope. So God, be with us as we worship. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Nathan, I'm going to ask, would you, would you turn off our broadcast? Watching this.